We have bison and we have pronghorns. Both of these species were very extensively hunted during the 19th and early 20th centuries, and both of them suffered population crashes. The only reason that they're still with us today is because of the intervention of people like Theodore Roosevelt. Teddy Roosevelt, as a convinced conservationist, was very concerned about the fate of bison. What he'd seen in his old lifetime out west was that these huge herds had been reduced to a few scattered individuals. It was a real concern by the mid-1880s whether bison would survive at all. They'd been brought down from millions and millions of individuals in the early part of the 19th century to probably just a few hundred by the 1880s. Roosevelt organized the Boone and Crockett Club, which took up the cause of the bison as one of its major prerogatives. A refuge was created. It was populated by some of the remaining individuals that were then largely in private hands. They managed to create a herd out of surviving animals living both in the US and Canada. And it is from this very narrow base that we still have bison today. With the pronghorn, it's a very similar kind of conservation story. Market hunters took out so many of these animals over a short period of time that they declined from many, many millions to a few tens of thousands over a few decades. A similar thing was done to ensure that the surviving animals were kept in good conditions in refugial areas. And from that base, we now have pronghorns existing once again throughout the western part of this country. And what this diorama is meant to signify is that even though these animals almost reached the brink of extinction, we brought them back. And we brought them back through care and consideration of conservation activities of the sort that are going to make it possible for animals of all sorts to survive in future. <laughs>